What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today I want to show you one of the cheapest options to use your Control Plus powered up or boost device. I already published many videos about the sets with the new control system and the most frequent objection I saw was about the smart device that is required to control them. I guess it is mostly accepted for boost since it is absolutely necessary for programming but I know that many of you does not like the smart device requirement for the powered up or the control plus apps. I also received concerns from parents who does not want to give their expensive smartphones to their kids just to play with Lego or they don't even own a smart device and don't want to spend hundreds of dollars or euros to buy one just as a controller. These are the devices I am using on a daily basis but I can say that they are way too expensive for this purpose and not necessarily needed. Let's see what are the recommended or tested devices on the official webpage. Regarding the iOS options, I won't go into details since even the oldest or cheapest one is well over 100 bucks. As for the Android ones, there are different examples on the different device guide pages. There are some pretty old ones like the Samsung S5 or the LG G3 from 2014, but they are pretty difficult to buy new nowadays. The rest of the list is again more expensive than 100 bucks. I took a closer look at the specifications and from the three applications the Control Plus one is the most resource hungry. It requires 1.5 GB of RAM, Bluetooth 4.1 and a couple of other things. So I sat down and went through all the budget options I could find. There are lots of low-end phones with only 1 GB of memory or only Bluetooth 4.0. I wanted to find something that is reasonably priced and it is not coming from a totally unknown brand. So here it is ladies and gentlemen, the best option I could find, the Xiaomi Redmi 7A. You can get this phone around 100 bucks and it meets all the requirements for the LEGO applications. It has 2GB of RAM, Bluetooth 4.2, it has an 8-core CPU and a 5.4-inch screen. So let's open the box and see how it performs. The box is quite small, nothing fancy, but looks and feels okay. What do we get in the box? Obviously the phone itself, some manuals, we get a fast charger, which is quite surprising for the price, and a USB micro USB cable, and uh, yeah, well, that's all. The phone has a pretty decent look. The back is shiny, so it's an instant fingerprint magnet. The 5.4 inch screen might be a little bit smaller than the average size nowadays, but it is comfortable to use. If I compare it with my P20 Pro, you can see that despite the price difference, the design is quite similar. There's one main noticeable difference if we turn on the screens. The resolution of the Redmi is nice, but the maximum backlight level is visibly lower than on the other device. The phone has a standard Android interface with the usual Google applications and a few from the manufacturer. It feels very responsive, I did not find any lag or glitch during testing. It also works perfectly without a SIM card, you only need Wi-Fi connection to download the apps, so it can be used without any data or voice plans. Now let's test the performance against the P20 Pro, which costs about 4 times more. The Control Plus app might be the best choice to start with, as that has the highest requirements among the LEGO control apps. As you can see, the loading time is a bit faster on the more expensive device, but nothing serious. Once the app is loaded, the interface is equally responsive on both phones. If we connect the apps to the hubs, there's again minimal speed difference. It might also happen because we are trying to connect two hubs to two phones at the same time and they get confused. After the initial calibration, you can see that the speed and responsiveness of the interfaces are very similar. There's no any visible lag on the Redmi phone. The animation of the touch control interface actually seems to be more fluid on the cheaper device. There's an error with the graphics on the left side, the edge of the previous screen is visible, but it's a problem with the app since it is visible on both phones. Let's see a test with the powered up app and the hubs with the AAA batteries. The loading time is a bit faster on the P20 Pro, but once we are in the app, the speed is again pretty much the same.
editing the program sequences is easier on a bigger screen, but I think the difference here is not that significant. Finally, the boost app, exact same speed and responsiveness on both devices. Editing and running the programs is also very similar. I also tested the phone with Brick Controller 2, works just as well as on my other phone or, or on the iPad. We also did an outdoor range comparison. I asked my father to walk away with the Technic Hub and I was watching when the Control Plus app loses the connection, then measure the distance where it could successfully reconnect. We did this for both phones and the reconnect distance was around 20 meters for both of them. Interestingly, that's much less than what I measured with the AAA powered up hub. I'll need to do a new test to see if there's a significant difference between the hubs. So, to sum it up, I think this is a great device for the price. I will be definitely using it going forward as a controller for my LEGO creations. If you did not want to buy yet the new LEGO sets with the Control Plus or powered up apps because of the pricey smart device requirements, then I really suggest to have a look at this one. You can find links with the details and the availability below in the description or in the comments section. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. See you next time.